Okay, another day on the road, another tripodless video recording. And this time I left my hairbrush in the car. So I took a shower and now my hair is all messed up and here I am having to record my journal because I said I would every day. And so here I am showing up. And I'm sure this is one of the lessons that I was supposed to learn when, when I undertook this, which is just showing up is more important. Um, and maybe in a week I'll realize that putting on a good, making sure your lipstick is straight and making sure your eyeglasses don't have glare and whatever is a good uh, lesson to learn. But today we're just showing up. Um, and I wanted to show up today specifically and talk about self-compassion because I've decided that my next small book is going to be the little book of self-compassion for super achievers. And um, it's 14 exercises uh, to help you maintain self-compassion in your life. And I figured it could be done in sequence or independently or whatever. And... Um, and so I've been exploring this con this concept of self-compassion and I looked up compassion because I you know I'm I'm defining what it is in the very intro and the Webster's or I believe it's the Webster's definition whatever Google recommended of uh compassion is includes pity for the suffering of others and I do not like this definition at all I feel like compassion is not pity for the suffering of others so much as it is a comprehension of the larger context and a gentleness for the outcome, considering the larger context of the things that were happening. So for example, um, the if I'm going to be compassionate with myself about my progress with the book, which is something that actually was one of the prompts for the for the consideration of this topic, um, I'm going to say, well, I was traveling and I wanted to, you know, get a good night's sleep and I needed to take care of myself and I wanted to spend time with Russ and um, the dogs and get Mozilla work done because that's important and not just wholesale beat myself up about the fact that I didn't accomplish the thing I wanted to accomplish. And that's what self-compassion is for me, to me. Uh, and compassion is for other people. When you look at somebody's situation and you say, like, well, for example, um, you know, why isn't that person getting a job? Um, the compassionate answer is maybe they don't know how, or maybe they don't know where to look, or maybe they don't have the right connections. Having some comprehension and consideration for the larger context of a thing is in my opinion. That's what compassion is. And having compassion for yourself is so important because as super achievers, as high achievers, we really, we hold ourselves to a very high standard. And a lot of times these are not achievable standards, um, but we hold ourselves to them in the hope that we will achieve greatness, even if we occasionally, and you know, it, it happens, sometimes we fail. But having compassion for ourselves in conjunction with having high expectations for our own and high standards for our own behavior and, uh, and, and, and production, really, and performance, um, that's, that combination uh, can work in incredible favor. You can make rational decisions and get get a good night's sleep and not ever feel guilty about it. Um, take the time to meditate, take the time to go to the gym and still feel good about yourself. Even if you don't hit all your goals, um, you can still achieve far more than most other people do. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, anyway, my dogs are barking, I better go.